Hello there. In this video, we will be learning about the conservative and non-conservative forces. So first let's understand about the conservative forces. So the conservative forces are the forces for which the work done in moving an object between two points is independent of the path taken. For an example, this is my point A and this is my point B. If it is a conservative force, then it won't depend whether I am directly going from A to B like this or I am going from A to B like this or I am taking this path. The work done in all these paths would be exactly the same. That is what is called a conservative force. Also, the total work done by the conservative force around any closed path is zero. What this means is that let's say I am going from A to B and I am doing some work. So when I am coming back from B to A, I am doing the same work but in opposite direction. So the total work done would be zero. Now let's understand some key characteristics of the conservative forces. The number one is the work done depends only on the initial and final positions, not on the path. The second one is a potential energy function can be defined for the conservative forces. What this means that for every conservative force, there is a corresponding potential energy associated with the position of an object. Now this potential energy cannot be defined for a non-conservative force. For conservative forces, this is the relation that holds that is fx is equal to negative of du by dx. Now this u is what is called the potential energy and that is only defined for the conservative forces. The examples of conservative forces are the gravitational force, electrostatic force, spring force, so let's prove that the work done depends only on the initial and final position, not on the path. Now imagine that I'm taking this box with mass m to a height of h in this direction. So I'm lifting this like this. Now the force acting on this box will be because of the weight of the box that would be equal to mg. Now if I have to lift this box, I'll have to apply the same force mg to a height of h. So I can say that the work done would be equal to force times displacement. Now the force in this situation is mg and the displacement is h. So I can say that the work done in this situation would be equal to mg times h. And actually the work done is equal to force into displacement into cos theta. In this situation I am not worried about cos theta because the force and the displacement are happening in the same direction. So I can say that theta equals to 0 degree so the cos theta will become 1. So the work done is simply force times displacement that is mg times h. Now the force that is involved here is the gravitational force and I'm doing the work done to take this particular box from here and I'm overcoming the gravitational force. And we know that the gravitational force is a conservative force. So the work done against this force would not depend on the path. So what this means that if I'm taking this box from this A position to B position till a height of H and the work done came out to be mgh. Now, the same work done should come if I take this box from this particular height like as in from position C to position B because I'm taking this box to the same H height so it should not depend on the path. Let's imagine that after some time the box is at this particular position. So let's see the forces acting on this box. So we can say that the weight of the body would be mg. Imagine that this angle is theta degrees. So I can resolve this mg into two components. This would become mg cos theta and this would become mg sin theta. Now this mg cos theta would be countered by the normal reaction. Now since I'm taking this box to the point B, I'll have to counter mg sin theta. So in this direction, I'll have to apply mg sin theta force. So the work done in this case would be equal to, so the work done would be equal to mg sin theta times this distance that is CB. Again, I'm neglecting the cos theta component here because the force is in the same direction of displacement. Can I say in this triangle, sin theta would be equal to perpendicular upon hypotenuse that would be equal to H divided by hypotenuse would be CB. So I can put the value of sin theta in this formula and I can say it would be mg into h divided by cb times cb. Now cb and cb gets cancelled and ultimately we are left with mgh. Isn't this the same work done that we had calculated earlier? 
सो दिस प्रूव दैट इन द कंजर्वेटिव फोर्सेज द वर्क डन इज पाथ इंडिपेंडेंट Now that we have understood about the conservative force, let's understand about the non-conservative forces. So the non-conservative forces are exact opposite of conservative forces. What it means that in this scenario, the work done would depend upon the path taken. So for an example, this is A and this is B. So if I am going from A to B via this path, my work done would be different. Let's say if I am taking this path, my work done would come out to be different. so it doesn't just depend on the starting and the ending point it also depend on the path that i take now the conservative forces dissipate mechanical energy like turning it into the heat or sound and you cannot define a potential energy function for them the example of a non conservative force is friction imagine a situation where let's say this is your house and this is your school this particular length this yellow colored line is let's say 10 kilometers so the distance from your house to your school is let's say 10 kilometers so while going to 10 kilometers you will have to do the work against the friction offered by this path but imagine that you take this green path instead of the yellow path now the length of this green path is much more than this yellow path let's say the length of this green path is 15 kilometers now in this situation you will have to do more work to counter the friction and the work done would come out to be different so that is why it's a non conservative force so in the non conservative forces work done is actually path dependent so here are the key characteristics of the non conservative force the work done by these forces depends upon the path they convert the mechanical energy into the other forms of energy like heat sound etc examples being friction air resistance viscous drag these are all the non conservative forces i hope you are now familiar with what is conservative and what is non conservative forces and their important characteristics see you in the next video till then bye bye